Welcome to Introduction to Finance. Welcome to Introduction to Finance Session 12, some lessons from capital market history. Very exciting session. We're going to look at what has happened to stocks and bonds over the last 85 to 90 years, and um, also interest rates and inflation. Don Quixote once said, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Spread them out among a number of investments. We're going to look at in this session total returns, percentage returns. We're going to look at dollar returns, percentage returns, and the components of total return, which is very important. We also learned this in session eight. Two components of total return are dividend yield and capital gains yield. We're going to look at average yields over the last 85 to 90 years and variance and standard deviation and how they are measures of volatility. Uh, there is a reward for bearing risk, and the greater the risk, the greater the reward, and vice versa. These are some words of wisdom you should closely pay attention to. We have five learning objectives in this session. First, we're going to look at returns on investment. We're going to look at what has happened in history uh, over the last 85 to 90 years for stocks and bonds, interest rates and inflation, T-bills. Uh, what are the average returns? That's going to be our first lesson. What has been the average return on small company stocks, large company stocks, um, bonds, inflation, and T-bills? And how do these returns vary is our second lesson. What are uh, some measures of variability and volatility? We'll look at calculating standard deviation and variance. And finally, what is capital market efficiency? We're going to look at all those key sessions. Uh, return on investment is money gained or lost from an investment. So might we have a positive return? We might have a positive return or a negative return uh, in your investing lives. You'll see an income component in many of these investments and a capital gain component. So when you buy a stock, you're trying to look for price appreciation, which we're going to call the capital gain. And you might be also looking for a dividend. Not all stocks pay dividend, but some do. And you might be an income investor. Uh, where you're looking for some price appreciation or capital gain and some uh, dividend payment out also. So uh, total return is equal to dividend income plus capital gain or loss. That will give you your total dollar return. And we like in a lot of cases to talk about percentages. Um, we don't get really excited when we say, if you might talk to a friend and you say, well, I invested $1,000 and I made $480, they get somewhat excited. But if you say I made a 48% return on investment, everyone wants to know what stock you just bought. So uh, we'll break our total return down into two components as we had in session eight, dividend yield, which is D1 over P0, or D sub T plus one over P sub T, and capital gains yield, which is P sub T plus one minus P sub T over P sub T. It always takes on the form when you're looking at a price appreciation or depreciation, X2 minus X1 over X1 is always the way to calculate it. Um, so total percent return is uh, D sub T plus 1 over P sub T plus P sub T plus 1 minus P sub T over P sub T. Again, that has a common denominator, so you can uh, jam all of those together if you so choose and do, and do it as one equation versus two pieces. Let's look at an example on return on investment. Uh, suppose you bought some stock at the beginning of the year for $25 per share. The stock went up to $35 per share by the end of the year. In addition, you got a $2 dividend per share. What's the dividend yield, capital gains yield, and the total percentage return? And if you invested $1,000, how much do you have at the end of the year? So we draw a little map of this, and you see the price going from $25 to $35 on this uh, slide with the $2 dividend being thrown in. And again, we can calculate our total percentage return by putting together the two pieces, dividend yield plus capital gains yield. So your dividend yield will be your uh, $2 over the initial price, D1 again over P0, and that's $2 over $25 or 8%. So you have a nice rich 8% dividend on this stock. And then we can look at our price appreciation or capital gains yield, uh, P1 minus P0 over P0, 35 minus 25 over 25, and I get a 40% capital gains yield. So fabulous return on this stock. During this year, my total return is dividend yield plus capital gains yield, 48%. Uh, so if you invested $1,000, your investment will have grown to $1,480. Again, people don't get too excited if you say your investment went up $480. Bucks. Someone might say big what, but if you say my investment went up 48%, what stock is this? Everyone's curious. So many times your returns are uh, talked about in terms of percentage gain or loss.